Hi dear students, welcome to the course of Architecture and Town Planning. I am your teacher Ravinder Kumar Khyani, Assistant Professor, Department of Architecture and Planning, NED University of Engineering and Technology, Karachi, Sin, Pakistan. Today the topic of our discussion is Urban Zoning and Land Use Control. What is Urban Zoning? City is always divided in various zones and the land of the city has scarce so it is being used for various purposes. So we are going to explain what is going on in a city and how urban zoning and land use control takes place in city. What is urban zoning? The zoning is a device of land use regulation used by local governments in most developed countries. The word is derived from the practice of designating permitted uses of land based on map zones which separate one set of land uses from other. Zoning may be used based that is regulating the uses to which land may be put or it may regulate building height, lot coverage or plot coverage and similar characteristics or some combinations of these. According to G.K. Hiraskar in his book Town Planning he writes that zoning is defined as process of making sections or divisions of city areas in different zones to control the incompatible land uses and prevent the misuse of land and buildings, heights and densities of population at the initial stages. According to Mr. Trevor Whitley, who describes zoning in the Encyclopedia of Urban Planning, the zoning is a division of community into zones or districts as per present and potential use of properties for controlling and directing the land use and development of the city. Well, urban zoning and land use control is defined by other authors. For example, the W. Paul Farmer and Julia Gibb defines that the zoning is the division of land according to building design and use. And this definition they explain in the book Introduction to Urban Planning by Anthony J. Kachanis and James C. Snyder. Definition they describe is that Comprehensive zoning is a division of total municipal land into districts in which restrictions are imposed on the use of the land. The zoning regulations are drafted and developed by the legislative authority and enforced by the municipal action. The legislative authority permits the municipality to apply constant and consistent pressure upon the landowners to develop and use their land through the guidance of the community plan and the public interest. What is the objective of zoning? The objective of zoning are three major objectives. One is conserving the value of the properties. Secondly, assuring orderly community growth and safeguarding general public welfare. One of the major objectives of zoning legislation is to establish regulations which provide locations for all essential uses of land and buildings and to ensure that each use is located at most appropriate place in the city. What is the purpose of zoning? The main concern of zoning is with use of land and buildings, their height and volumes, proportions, with open spaces and the density of population in each particular zone. The zoning is used as an instrument for implementation of plan on development of privately owned land and buildings rather than public land, buildings and facilities. The zoning attempts to group together the most compatible land uses within the city. What is the scope of zoning? Theoretically, the primary scope or purpose of zoning is to segregate uses that are thought to be incompatible. In practice, zoning is used to prevent new development from interfering with existing residents or businesses and to preserve the character of the community or the city people. The zoning is commonly controlled by local governments, such as counties and municipalities or sub-districts in, sub in our local context or talukas. Though the nature of zoning regime may be determined or limited by the state or national planning authorities or through enabling legislation by the provincial authorities, etc. Zoning may include the regulation of the kinds of activities which will be acceptable on particular lots or plots, such as open spaces, residential areas, the agricultural areas, the commercial or industrial areas, etc. The densities at which 
those activities can be performed from low density housing such as single family homes to high density housing such as high rise apartment buildings the height of the building the amount of space structure may occupy the location of a building on a lot or a plot or setbacks how much should be the compulsory open space around the proportions of the types of space on a plot or a lot such as how much landscape space should be given or impervious space should be given how much space to be given for the traffic lanes and parking must be provided in the city because this is a major issue within the cities then what is the importance or and need of the zoning the zoning is important aspect of town planning because without zoning regulation incompatible land uses occur which causes problems of health and hygiene the environmental pollutions congestion public safety and security so these are the major issues that occurs without zoning for example industrial zone is mostly away located away from the residential zone so as the residential area should be secured from a dangerous gases and smoke pollution as well as the waste of the industry the business and commercial zone is also made away from residential zone so as the residential area should be free from noise and road traffic simultaneously the population is also distributed in different zones differently so as the population should not be concentrated in one zone and situation of congestion or community problems may emerge then utility pressure is also another factor that's why we keep population uh, at different zones in addition the public building heights are also controlled by zoning so as high rise should not develop with low height housing because high rise they cut off the sunshine and breeze to the low rise housing which makes the life of residents uncomfortable for example in chicago new york or bombay building cost long shadow for example if there is a high rise building it cost shadow of uh, at least 1 km so the light is gone from the low rise buildings and the air is also stopped so this is the issue that's why the zoning is important height zoning is important then zoning is important because it secures an orderly growth of town how the plan town will grow over the period of time it promotes health and safety it increases utility beauty and efficiency of the town now comes the land use control what is land use land use is the human modification of natural environment or virgin land or wilderness into built environment such as field pastures and settlement or housing and commercial areas the major effect of land use on land cover since 1750 has been deforestation of the temperate region more recent significant effects of land use include the urban sprawl the soil erosion the soil degradation the salinization and desertification land use change together with the use of fossil fuels are the major anthropogenic sources of carbon dioxide and dominant greenhouse gas greenhouse gases it is also it has also been defined as a total of arrangement activities and inputs that people undertake in a certain land cover type each designation or a parcels of zoning comes with a list of approved land uses that can legally operate on the zone parcel is known as municipal land use because municipal authority is the main uh, controlling authority for the land use now land use and environment this is also one of the important factor the land use and land management practices have a major impact on natural resource including water soil nutrients plants and animals you have already uh, much knowledge about it but let's discuss further the land, land use information can be used to develop solution for natural resource management issues such as salinity and water quality for instance water bodies in a region that has been deforested or having erosion will have different water quality than those in areas that are forested where there has been an absence of any land use planning or of its orderly execution or the existence of financial or legal incentives that have led to the wrong land use decisions or one sided central planning lead to over utilization of the land resources so land is an scarce good in a city so it should be efficiently used 
as a consequence the result has been misery for the large segment of the local population and destruction of the valuable ecosystems so such narrow approaches should be replaced by a technique for the planning and management of land resources that is in create, in create, in create, uh, integrated and holistic and where where land users uh, are central and land is used is controlled so what i'm saying here is that that people should be given priority for their healthy life and land use should be controlled properly and appropriately in cities this will ensure the long term quality of land or quality of life for human use and the prevention and resolution of social conflicts related to the land use and conservation of ecosystems of high biodiversity value well what are the land use control mechanisms how do we control the land use in the city let's discuss the land use is designated on the basis of existing land use patterns and its future orientation the land use control mechanisms exercised on three main categories that is residential use commercial use and industrial use of the land in the urban area the type of buildings allowed to be developed are regulated by the land use zoning ordinance the land use zoning is designated in urbanized area through floor area ratio building coverage ratio and compulsory open space ratio the land use zoning is classified in three categories first there is a use zoning then there is a height zoning and then there is density zoning what is use zoning in the use zoning the city is divided into different sections or zones for various specific purposes these use zonings are classified in six broad categories or sections for example residential zone commercial zone industrial zone civic zone institutional zone and recreational zone now residential zone can be further subdivided into low rise medium rise high rise low density high density medium density similarly commercial zone also have these three categories of low medium and high and industrial zone also have further you can say lower medium high uh, industry and civic zone also have various kinds of other uh, you can say activities and buildings institutional zones are also having the education the health institution the government institutions similarly recreation is also a point which where we have variety of land uses so let's discuss further residential zone it is the zone for housing of large number of people the buildings developed in the residential zone are the detached single family houses the semi detached houses or duplexes the group housing or uh, you can say uh, continuously town houses the chals the low medium and high rise flats or apartments and residential skyscrapers on the right you can see these figures this zone covers the area about 40 to 50% of the whole city of the total uh, away from business and located away from the businesses or industrial zones so this is like the major zone in the city and it should be away from the uh, industrial and business zone and 40 to 50% must be housing in the city it needs a privacy and use of green belt and parks and fast communication facilities so as uh, people can go from residences to their workplaces then there is commercial zone the commercial zone covers the area of only 2 to 5% of the city and more than that is not good for the city and it have market the warehousing the storage spaces the go downs the business offices the banks and residential spaces for the employees so commercial zone must be 2 to 5% and should be away from the residential zone but nowadays there is a philosophy that we should have a mix uh, residential come commercial so as the community have a uh, different kinds of good life style now they should be located near traffic transport and roadside areas so as commercial area can be accessible and by use used by the people then there is industrial zone the industrial zone also covers the 5% to 20% of the city depend on which country we are uh, talking about so industrial zone is also very important because it generate pollution and it have a uh, waste that is generated so this is the most important zone after residential zone in the city this is located the leeward of the town means away from the town so that 
dangerous gases should not affect the town population leeward means the wind direction should be away uh, taking the fumes away from the city and not bringing the air the smoke to the city well this zone further subdivided into four categories first is minor industries second is light industries third is medium industries and fourth is heavy industries let's discuss about these industries minor industries you can see figures on your left there are different kinds of minor industries these are the small industries such as bakeries the dairies the laundries and these these can be located near the residential zone for the benefit of the people then light industries the light industries are small factories such as glass factory the porcelain factory or ice factory which can only use electric power and not solid fuel and it's not much real noisance so they can be located at the periphery of the town or periphery of the residential area then there is medium industries medium industries these are the large factories or industrial units such as cotton mills oil mills sugar mills which produce noisy environment and residential and commercial zones should be kept away from the medium industries because it affects it is very incompatible if they are uh, joined together with residential well then there are heavy industries what are heavy industries these are the large manufacturing industries or large heavy duty industrial units such as a cement factory or a steel mill or a steel factory or the fertilizer plants that produce fumes and gases and so much solid and liquid waste so these should be kept away from the city not near by the city therefore they should be located in the outskirts away from the towns and leeward position for example you see this steel mill is basically away outside the karachi similarly nuriyawal is also away from the karachi and the you know, lucky cement factory they are all uh, you know, located outside it's very important that the heavy industry should be located away from the city civic zone civic zone is for the public facilities and this zone covers around the area of 2 to 3% of the city it contains all the public buildings the town hall the courts the libraries the post offices the museum the auditorium the banks because these are the public areas where people need these areas for their different purposes these should be located at strategical locations within where public access will be easier so for every housing and commercial area these should be strategically located so that everybody have the equal distance uh, you can say uh, accessibility to these areas then there is institutional zone this is like uh, education and health institutions and this is again located in the quiet zone or having a natural environment it, it covers around the area of 1 to 2% of the city and it contains school colleges university and research institute with therapeutic environment or good environment then there is the crucial zone this zone is located or planned within the natural elements of the city such as the rivers the mountains or the hilly areas and then there should be uh, covering 15 to 20 percent of the city space because for the healthy lifestyle recreational zone should be available for the city people and this provides healthy environment to the citizens and it include parks the playgrounds auditorium cinemas and theaters so recreation zone can be integrated within the housing and commercial areas and it should be not only uh, separate but also within the housing and commercial areas in the city now comes the height zoning the height zoning is quite important for the purpose of good livable environment with appropriate sunlight and air movement within the buildings the control over height and volume of buildings is also necessary for prevention from the social evils and aesthetic beauty of the town to create a cohesiveness among the small and large buildings and to satisfy the air ground traffic rules for example there are airport also so if the airport is near to a residential area and the residential should be at the high rises then it's very uh, dangerous so high zoning is quite important for the city because high rises need a specific consideration regarding movement of airplanes and to avoid the narrow streets and traffic congestion now there are various methods to control the building volume heights and that is through the road widths 
are airplane rules or bulk method rules. According to Mr. G.K. Hiras in his book Town Planning, he writes, the first major method to control building heights is through road width or airplane rules. Generally, it should be 45 degree to 63.5 degree from the center of the road to the rooftop edge of the building. Here you can see the figure. This is bulk method rule. That is the ratio which is given. That is 1 is to 1 ratio, 1 is to 2 ratio of the building. And from the center, you can make a diagonal line of 45 degree to 63 degree and building height should be uh, within this limit. And as you make a building away from a building, you get more height. Now, then the other major method to control the building height is bulk volume method in which building volume is controlled by making it equal to the volume of a prism where plinth area is considered as base and height equal to width of the road. So here you can see the prism and building should be uh, developed within this prism uh, style. Now let's go ahead. This is basically 1 upon 3 multiplied by area and multiplied by height. So that is the, you can say, the bulk uh, volume method. Then the third important method currently applied in developed and underdeveloped countries is floor space index, FSI or floor area ratio. In this method, the total floor area of building is controlled by relating it with the open spaces in the total plot area. In the building bylaws of Karachi Building Control Authority or now Sindh Building Authority, now known as SBCA, it is termed as FAR or floor area ratio. The thumb rule in this regard is that as much as the plot area, as less is the covered area. And as less is the plot area, as much as the covered area. So I again repeat for you that as much as the plot area, as you have a bigger plot, there should be less covered area. And if you have a smaller plot, you can have large covered area. You can make building more large within the small plots. It means the covered area is inversely proportional to the plot area. You must remember this rule. If one reads the KDO building bylaws, it will be evident that for different plot sizes or a different location within the city, different floor area ratios are applied. For example, in somewhere we have 1 to 5 ratio, 1 to 4 ratio, 1 to 1 ratio. Depends upon which location we are talking about. Then there is density zoning. The density zoning is related to the population density, gross density and net density. Where the population density is population per unit area of land or acres of land. The gross density is the average density of population per unit of area of residential zone and open spaces, schools, shops and institutions. And net density is the average density per unit area of housing and roads. Now, density zoning is further described as the objective of density zoning is to control the overcrowding and concentration of population in some particular areas. In density zoning, the town planner fix certain standards of gross and net densities for various areas which prohibit the collection of population in any particular zone. Now, this control of population is achieved in three ways. First, fixing the minimum size of the plot for each house. That minimum size should be 40 yards or 50 yards or 80 yards, depends. Specifying number of housing per unit area and how many houses can be made in the plot. Then fixing the ratio of the total plot area versus total built-up area. So built-up and open space ratio. So the land use zoning power is mainly lying with the local development authority which enforces the rules and regulations of land use and zoning and make changes in its form from time to time. Now the issue is that there are different, you can say, uh, land controlling uh, institutions within the city. So this is another issue. So when different authorities are controlling the land, then there is different bylaws for everyone. So otherwise chaos will uh, result in city if the land use zoning is not done, then chaos will occur. After having the understanding about the urban zoning and land use control, let's look at a small uh, video about zoning matters, how land use policies shape life in USA.
So let's begin our video. Zoning is a way for communities to separate land by use or form. For example, an area could be dedicated to commercial or industrial use, or there could be a restriction on how many housing units can be built. Zoning shapes the places where we live, but it also shapes our lives. Local zoning regulations determine where we can find housing, schools, and parks, and who gets to use them. Policymakers initially created zoning codes to protect public health. For example, to stop residents from getting sick from living too close to factories. But from the start, zoning has separated more than just land uses. It has also separated people. In the early 20th century, Many communities explicitly use zoning ordinances to racially segregate neighborhoods, effectively declaring that different skin colors were as incompatible as a family's home and a smokestack. By the late 20th century, civil rights legislation outlawed overt housing discrimination, but those explicit racial barriers were quickly replaced by subtler methods. Even today, exclusionary zoning policies that restrict lower cost or higher density housing limit racial and economic diversity and raise housing costs. By driving up housing costs, restrictive zoning can exclude people from equal access to public resources, like schools and parks, and leave lower income workers unable to afford housing close to available jobs. When regions are more economically and racially segregated, everyone loses. Local economies see slower growth, and residents of all races are less upwardly mobile. And finally, despite being created to protect public health, zoning often pushes multifamily buildings closer to highways in areas with higher concentrations of air pollutants. As a result, low-income people and people of color are more likely to live in places that could make them sick. It doesn't have to be this way. When done thoughtfully, zoning can connect people and places, not divide us. Communities across the United States are beginning to re-examine the role of zoning and change the restrictive zoning rules, opening neighborhoods to multifamily housing, walkable densities. Well, you have understood about the uh, policies in the USA. Let's talk about the uh, land use issue uh, across the globe. living things. And because of this, it plays an important role in helping regulate
land use control is not only important for urban areas but also for the rural areas i think you have understood very well about this topic of urban zoning and land use control Good. now thank you very much these are the references for this lecture thanks for watching for lecture notes visit my blog www.tonplanklectures.blogspot.com now the lecture is over it's time to do some other activities do whatever you would like to do but don't trouble anyone thank you very much and goodbye